Hello and welcome to Miniature Realms and welcome to my Bolt Action 8th Army Project Vlog number 6. Um, so those of you that have watched my other project vlogs on the channel, so the American Civil War, Epic One and the the new Wars of the Roses one, will know that I tend to pick um, a battle to kind of build my forces towards and build some terrain towards. Now that the overall plan afterwards is to have an overspill of all of that so I can game the, the period. Um, I didn't really have quite the same approach when it came to this bolt action project. It was very much geared around, I really, really wanted to make it a painting project. I really wanted to paint a British, Eighth Army Force, um, and less focus on on the gaming side of things uh, as well. Now I do want to play the game, and I do want to game as well, um, but it was very much about painting those miniatures. I just wanted to for a long time. Um, so I started to think about terrain a little bit more and how these miniatures will look on the table, and I wanted to build a a set of terrain that would first be be interchangeable. Um, but ideally be around one layout to start with and then have a few things I can add and take away afterwards. So I have a, um, a fantastic geek villain mat. Um, it's the LLMA mat as far as I remember. I've already reviewed this on the channel. Um, I'll put a few t-shirts underneath it at the moment to provide some undulations. I don't know how well the camera's picking it up from this angle. I will move around a little bit in a moment. Um, I do find it quite hard to light. I've had to play with the white balance. There's something about lighting the, the, the kind of the light yellowy desert matte that um, just bleaches everything out and you end up with a very pale almost blue tint. I'm not an expert when it comes to camera and lighting and things so I've had to play with the white balance a little bit with this um, it's a little bit closer what I'm looking at in my view screen now is a little bit closer to the real colours that I see without playing with the white balance it gets very very strange um, but anyway since since the last video I did and since the sort of unboxing review of them I have painted the Red Edra stuff that I picked up um, and I've painted which is basically those those Middle Eastern buildings and the sandbags and there are a few little explosion things and their little resin things that have come from Warlord Games. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about what I've got already what some of my plans might be for the future and then open it up to the comments um, for suggestions for manufacturers of terrain, things that might look good on the table, the kind of typical things you may see, um, and so I can maybe add a bit more and fill it out. And obviously this is nowhere near enough at the moment. I am building towards a six by four. I may play games on a four by four at some points, um, but I want enough terrain on there. I don't want it so um, open that it sort of doesn't have an effect on the game, but also I want it to be kind of semi-period realistic and there would have been lots of open expanses apart from undulations and, and some rocks and things like that as well. So I appreciate that. So let's go in a little bit closer and take a, a closer look at um, what I've painted already. So I've got the camera off the tripod at the moment so I can move it around so I do apologise for movements and things. But these are the three Renedra houses and I'm going to get a closer look at those in a second and I'll definitely put some stills up. Um, but we've also got these small blast markers pretty much just airbrushed and then lots of weathering powders put in and it wouldn't need much work at all um, and then the same with the sandbags so airbrushed um, a couple of colors I won't do a full color disc because this isn't a tutorial or so um, I actually sprayed them with a with a beige color first with a, with a rattle can the same as the buildings actually then airbrushed on some inks um, and then just using some AK um, sand effects on there heavily watered down and brushed on a little bit of um, Vallejo weathering powders on top um, but they're they're pretty much that's all I need um, this bit here was built from leftovers on the kit so all well, things I didn't add in so spare ladders you've got enough ladders to put two ladders in each building um, the internal ladder on the lower floor is not really needed you can't take the internal floor away either and it'd be too small to game in so I kept a couple of those back um, I left the little sofa out of one of them and the food bowl etc and put a couple of the extra sandbags on and a door and I just made a kind of a little rough barricade that I thought you could kind of have in the have in the street or something um, that's pretty much it. There are some uh, small resin barrels that uh, are from Warlord as well. So 
So here we are at the desk. Um, I'll just do a quick look over of these miniatures. It's quite hard again to get the camera angle, the light right on it, but I'll, um, from this angle, I can pick them up and, and tilt them towards the camera and we'll see how we go from there. But um, so, so as you can see, the colors are a little bit clearer on this, um, this lighting setup than it is over at the table. So I, a lot of this I airbrushed in with, with um, inks and things, um, little downward marks to kind of already build in the idea of streaking rather than just to do it all with the weathering and then reinforce it with the weathering afterwards. Um, so there's um, AKA, um interactive dust here. There's Vallejo diorama effects, the terracotta, um, the sort of the European earth effect and then the the european uh, thick mud as well stippled on and then the ak interactive desert dust effects watered over the top and then powders brushed in as well so vallejo pigments uh, light center and uh, so green earth actually which is almost white and the same kind of things that i've used on the tank um the m3 if you've looked at that uh, painting tutorial um, the wood was all very, very simple. Again, it's just um, contrast. So after I've sprayed on the base color, I've gone back and dry brushed um, to pick up on the wood grain and then just gone over with contrast wild wood, which has given me a base color and a little bit of a highlight naturally in there. And then after you put on the effects, it just looks dusty anyway. You don't need to do any further highlighting, etc. And then in the top of the buildings, so the roofs are done the same way. I have let it so you can remove the lids, remove the lids, the, the roofs, um, and the inside I've only done flat colours for the rugs and things, I wasn't going to paint in um, kind of North, North African, Moroccan style rugs and things, that would have been a little bit too much. Um, and I've done the same process for all of them, regardless of the size. So you see some slightly different colours, so you've got like a little couch sofa thing in there and a um, a little red puff thing. Again, lots of lots of weathering powders and stuff in there afterwards to make it look dusty and dry. It just takes away some of the glare. And again, they are just contrast over a dry brush surface. This is more than you'll ever need. I can't imagine many games the, the roost will come off. And this one has no ladder, so you kind of have to bang it <laughs> to get the, li the lid off. I said lid again, haven't I? Um, so you get the idea. Um, I'm quite pleased with the way they came out. It was probably from spray to finish um, about four hours or so to to do the whole buildings, all three of them, and the sandbags and the craters for everything you saw on the table a moment ago. Which isn't too bad, really. is isn't too bad. What I'm going to do now, we're going to cut back over to the table. I'm going to start sort of thinking about what I'm going to lay out next. Um, and I've got some ideas around a train, which you may have seen teased in a hobby video if you watch the non-bolt action videos on the channel. So back over at the table, um, I've, I've chucked the very, very few models on that I've um, actually painted so far. And I've actually taken some pictures, which I'll put up towards the end of the video. But I wanted to um, grab the next thing that I think I'm going to work on that's going to be related to this. And I'm going to do a video as I turn it into terrain for this this table. And I know some Rissa Precision do a, um, you know, a main train station, which I will look to pick up as well. But I thought I'd just open it up and we'll look at the parts um, and I'll sort of see what I'm going to use and what I'm not going to use. So I'm, I've no intention of turning this into a full unboxing video. Um, when I do the, the, the project work on it, I'm going to make it one long video where I take it from taking it apart, giving it a good prime, um, and then painting it and making it into terrain. But I thought I'd just have a little look. So I, funnily enough, I've not had much of a look since I, since I purchased it. It was around, it was under £20, I think it was around £16, £17 in the UK from Amazon. Um, I think I've showed pictures in previous vlog that the scale looks about right, but uh, um, I think the track looks pretty easy to work with. It's pure plastic, nothing on there. Um, I'll be able to prime that really, really easily. I'll paint in the actual track itself and probably just put loads and loads of weathering on here. There is detail on the sleepers themselves. So I'm sure that if I uh, spray those a very, very dark brown or even white and use contrast, probably do it all the airbrush actually, otherwise it would take too long. And by the time I've got lots of the AK weathering effects and things on it, it will look absolutely fine on the table. Um, and I'm hopeful that I, it will go together 
easy enough in the future that I can leave it apart so I can pack it away for easy storage. It does seem like it takes a little bit of clipping in, which might mean that it'll take a lot of paint off. So I'll have to think about that, whether I build a section, it's gonna to be too long, isn't it? So I'm gonna to have to leave it in parts. Maybe I'll trip these bits off and just have it to rest together. Uh, we'll see, we'll see how it goes, but um, I'm not too worried about how it, you know, the overall how it goes together, because it's gonna work fine for terrain. And I'm sure I've got more than enough track to do far more than I need as well. Um, in terms of the carriages and things, I'm obviously going to do absolutely nothing with the, 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 the really cheap station. That will go in the bin. It will go to my sons to play with their Thomas trains and things. Um, this thing doesn't look too bad. I'm torn between completely repainting it um, and just weathering it. Um, I don't have any um, railway style decals and things so it might be nice to leave just some of this on there it's a nice maroonish color so i may may just look to to repaint the wheels and, and actually just weather it so we'll see how that goes um, the engine a little bit harder i probably want to keep this color um, so maybe I could mask it and again and just paint in the lower parts and then just look to weather the top It'll definitely speed up the painting process an LED light. I'll probably paint over that I'm definitely not going to need a red shining light at the front of it I'll have to try and cover the switch up somehow. I am kind of tempted to leave leave it So it still works which is a bit a little bit sad for a cheap train station But you never know might be might be nice for a, a video shot at least to have it moving across the the table it's probably going to go far too fast and shoot off and destroy things um and i'll probably look to keep keep this one as well again i may keep these colors and just decide to weather it rather than masking it all off afterwards although it becomes a very big paint job um i'm a bit worried about the inside there's no glass though um so i may try and get the airbrush inside a little bit and just try and darken it down a little bit and then focus on the wheels so my first thoughts my initial thoughts anyway are going to be to probably airbrush prime parts of the train just airbrush prime the wheels the underneath get rid of the really garish plastic leaving this top color as it is and then look to weather the whole thing and track i'll probably take it outside with a rattle can and give it a give it a good give it a good spray and um and work from there but it should be quite fun i think um to get sort of a at least going across the board for four foot or so I'll lay the track out and, and, and see how it works anyone got any ideas or any tips for any of that any thoughts and um, please do let me know i'd be really really interested in on in any other types of terrain that you think that would be really typical or work really well on this table anything you'd recommend would you recommend a couple of rock formations they're the kind of things coming to mind what kind of bush or shrubbery if any um, any ways of making it who might sell stuff that looks good um, I'm not quite sure where to go with that but I definitely think a couple of uh, rock formations will be good just to provide a little bit of cover but also to break up the open ground a little bit more um, and then once I've got the train station the track on there the train on there um, um, I think it might get to the point where it feels like there's enough terrain on the ball but i'd love to hear from you bolt action players on your thoughts on how much terrain is needed i feel like a decent amount of terrain works well but then also appreciate that that in much of the desert there may not have been much either there might have been open areas and things so love to hear your thoughts ideas um, about terrain to add to what i've already got but thank you very much for watching the video please do like share and subscribe i will be back within a couple of weeks i imagine with the, the next part of the progress for this bolt action project um, along with keeping up on all the other projects on the channel as well so do do hang around and watch more videos if you've liked what you've seen here here. Anyway, take care and I'll catch you soon.